<laughs> but, but what about the later influences? Ah. You know, because we're talking about stuff that they kind of grew up with, you know. I mean, so many of the songs that, that even Paul still has in his repertoire were songs that, you know, were some of the early songs that he sang. You know? Well, but what wasn't, didn't, I don't know when they got turned on to Dylan. Anybody know? Peter, anyone know when the Dylan thing? No? Yeah, well, not that kind of term. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about that term. I think 63. 63 was when we became aware of Dylan. You know, they don't sing twice, it's all right. Yeah, but you know, look at Hide Your Love Away. That's 64. Was it? 64. It sort of became. Babies. Yes. Yeah, that and the Dylan influence stayed as stayed well. Yeah. You know? Um, but, but, in, but even beyond that, I'm thinking, you know, I mean, why did they start playing around with backwards recordings and, you know, like pushing the envelope with that stuff? I don't know if that was so much the songwriting as it was the technique. Mm -hmm. I and mean, if you remember at Abbey Road, they actually used to wear white smocks, like scientists. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're rolling on multi-track and you had to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they didn't do the backwards. The men in white trucks have nothing to do with No, no that's what I mean. I'm saying that they, yeah. they, they, they wouldn't let them do that's that. That's what it is. <laughs> Was it at home and then he brought yeah, it in? He had two and then you, yeah, but then once you played around with it, did you then bring that into the studio yes. and transfer that over? Yes. So yeah, that I mean, the thing, the thing that I was saying, you really told me. Yeah, it's the composer produced it. Right. Yeah. Yes. What was the motivation? Was it just, this could be fun? Curiosity. Curiosity. What they sounded like backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you see, yeah. 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 Well, see but the, and you're right, it wasn't, you know, the guys in the white coats were the technicians, but the, I think the boys wanted to make it, wanted to experiment it further. It was also good actually with the whole interest in William Burroughs and, mm -hmm. you know, throwing, you know, wherever he would write things and throw the words out in the air and see how they land and stuff. That's great. to do with the whole, you know, alliatory movement. That, randomization of music and literature and everything else. Oh, that's so cool. Paul was born to the John. Yeah, I remember reading Paul. John has the reputation of being the Apple God guy. In fact, he's going to go, that's all bullshit. Paul was the one. Paul was going to the Stockhausen concerts and stuff like that. Yes, exactly. That's so great. You know, I'd heard a story that, you know, when they started getting into the technical side of it, that sometimes they would wait. You know, Ringo said to me that one time, George Martin and Jeff Emerson had left the studio and John ran to the board and just started like turning knobs, which you're not supposed to do. And like there's 5K above 10K and all this sort of sonic thing. He didn't pay attention to any of it. He just did it so that the cello sounded bright and crispy. And then he came back in and went, Lennon. And he was like, okay. And he just left it because it was groovy. But that was a big difference too. And then also, George Martin.